Hello and welcome to Dusty Hikers, the channel where I share my hiking adventures and test hiking shoes. In this video, I'm going to review three of the best trail running shoes for hiking this year. The Brooks Cascadia 16, the Hoka Speed Goat 5, and the Ultra Lone Peak 7. I recently did an 85 mile through hike from Bologna to Florence, Italy called Via Degli Dei, and I'm going to tell you how these shoes performed on such factors as comfort, traction, stability, protection, and time to dry. So if you're looking for a new pair of trail shoes for your next hike, stick around because I'm going to share with you which one I think is the best. Comfort is one of the most important factors when choosing a trail shoe because you don't want shoes that will make your feet ache and blister on every mile like some tortured hobbit on a quest or worse, make you want to quit the hike altogether. I was so lucky in this round of testing to test three shoes that are all very comfortable, but in very significantly different ways. I'm going to break all of that down for you right now. The Ultra Lone Peak 7 gave me a natural and responsive feel on the trail. The zero drop design and the wide toe box really allowed me to feel really connected to the terrain, making me feel more nimble and agile. I found the cushioning in these shoes to be just enough to protect me from the trail, rocks and debris and that sort of thing, but not so much cushioning and lift that I didn't feel disconnected from the trail. The Brooks Cascadia 16 is the most traditional and I would say reliable of the three shoes that I tested. They feature very balanced cushioning that's not too soft and it's not too firm. My feet always felt well supported and protected in these shoes, even on the longest and most arduous legs of the hike. I really appreciated the stability and support that these shoes provided. The Hoka Speed Goat 5 are the most cushioned and plush of the three shoes that I tested. I really liked walking in these shoes. I especially loved walking downhill where I would really lean into my heel strikes. These shoes will do a lot of work for you. These shoes also feature excellent grip and traction on different types of terrain. The only downside for me with this shoe was that it was a little bit narrow, especially in the toe area. And so sometimes on downhill, uh, my foot would slip to the front and I would feel a little bit of pinch on the outside of my toes. Overall, I was very impressed with the comfort that all three of these shoes provided and I think they're going to suit lots of different shoe preferences and even foot types. I didn't have any major issues in comfort with any of these shoes. In fact over the five day 85 mile through hike the only issue that I had was I got a blister on the outside of my pinky toe but that was probably due to wet conditions a fast pace and the fact that I essentially hiked a marathon in the last day. Stability is another really important factor when choosing trail shoes because you don't want shoes that are going to make you wobble and sway like a tipsy giraffe on stilts or worse make you turn your ankle. I found that these shoes had different levels of stability on different types of terrain so let's break that down. The Brooks Cascadia 16 was the clear winner for me for stability. It has a grooved midsole with a ballistic rock plate on the bottom that kept my foot in place. I never felt any slip or instability in these shoes, even on the most difficult portions of the trail. The Ultra Lone Peak 7 and the Hoka Speed Goat 5 were not as stable as the Brooks Cascadia 16, and in some situations I did encounter some kind of slippage or heel movement on different types of terrain. The Ultra Lone Peak 7 does have that wide toe box allowing my foot to wiggle around a little bit, but I did experience some slip in the heel, especially on very uneven terrain or when the when the shoe was in some kind of unusual orientation. The Hoka Speed Goat 5, on the other hand, has that extremely thick lift in the midsole and again provides lots of cushion, but in some sections of the trail, especially downhilling on uneven terrain, at certain points I almost felt like my foot was kind of sliding off the midsole, which wasn't very very reassuring for me. Overall, the Brooks Cascadia 16 was by far the most stable shoe of the three shoes that I tested, and I would recommend this shoe for anybody who really puts a high premium on stability and also protection. I spent a lot of blood, sweat, and money putting together this review for you. If you're finding something useful, consider hitting like. Also, if you want to support my channel, you can use the affiliate links in the description to purchase one of these shoes. That will help me continue to make these reviews of some of the best hiking shoes on the planet and sharing that information with you. Also, I have have individual videos on each one of these shoes. So if you're really narrowing down on which shoe you want to purchase, you definitely want to go check out those videos. And finally, if you buy hiking shoes periodically, consider hitting subscribe. You can use that as a bookmark and then come back to this channel whenever you're going to make your next hiking purchase. Traction is another really important factor, at least for me, in choosing a hiking shoe because you don't want a shoe that's going to make you slip and slide all over different kinds of surfaces, making you look like a drunk penguin on ice or worse, sliding off the edge of a cliff. 
of. In my testing and in spending 85 miles in these shoes on trail, I found that all of them provided superior traction and I never had any issues except for perhaps the last day when I was going uphill on basically wet clay dirt. Um, and so all three shoes kind of slipped in that condition, but I think any shoe on the planet would unless it had metal spikes coming out of the bottom of it. So to test these shoes for traction, obviously it's time spent on trail, but then I also do head to head testing. All three of these shoes have traditional rubber outsoles with lugs. I experienced really almost no issues with traction with any of these shoes. I always felt secure and confident when I placed my shoe on all different kinds of hiking surfaces. I hiked on asphalt, gravel, dirt, mud, grass, rocks, and everything in between. And again, all three of these shoes performed very well on traction. So for head-to-head -head testing, what I do is I just put a different shoe on each foot and then I sort of fast hike up and down this hill. It was essentially dirt and loose debris. And I was surprised to find that I found virtually no difference between these shoes on traction, which really checks out with what I experienced on the trail over 85 miles. So all in all, all three of these shoes in my experience provide superior traction on all kinds of different surfaces. So I can recommend any of these shoes if traction is the thing that's most important for you. Time to dry is another really important factor, especially if you're gonna do a multi-day through hike that's gonna be wet. You do not want shoes that are gonna stay smelly and soggy for days, creating an ecosystem in your feet where piranhas, leeches, and frogs can thrive. Seriously though, hiking in wet shoes can cause blisters, infections, and discomfort. So you want shoes that are gonna dry out quickly. To test this, I use a simple head-to-head -head testing regime where I weigh the shoes, soak the shoes and then dry the shoes. So the first thing that I do is I take the dry weight and then I soak the shoes for a few seconds in water, shake out the excess water and then re-weigh them. You can see here on the graph that the Brooks Cascadia 16 took on nearly 60% of its dry weight in water while the other two shoes only took on about 40% of their dry weight. In my experience, the shoe that takes on more water is just definitely going to take more time to dry. Are the materials in the shoe that you're about to purchase, are they hyd more hydrophobic or hydrophilic? So the next thing that I do is I just leave the shoes out to dry dry and then I re-weigh them every hour for nine hours. You can see after nine hours that the Brooks Cascadia 16 still had 20% of their dry weight in water. The Ultra Lone Peak 7 had about 5% and the Hoka Speed Goat 5 had just 1%. So if you are planning a multi-day through hike and you think that you're going to get wet, I would avoid the Brooks Cascadia 16 unless you have some way of drying them. Um, instead, I would go with either the Hoka Speed Goat 5, which would be the best, or the Ultra Lone Peak 7. Protection is another really important factor when choosing a trail shoe because you never know when you're going to step on a landmine, a bear trap, or your hiking buddy's face. To test for protection, I have two methods. I hike in the shoes and then I also do head-to-head -head testing. In my experience in hiking in these shoes over 85 miles, all three of these shoes provided excellent protection. So I can recommend any of these shoes for protection after 85 miles on rock, gravel, asphalt, grass, mud, all of those conditions, I never had any problems with protection. I stubbed my toe a few times in each of these shoes and I never had any pain that resulted in me having to adjust my gait or anything like that. I also stepped on a lot of rocks, sharp rocks and roots and things like that. And all three of these shoes protected the bottom of my foot. I didn't have any bruising or pain in the bottom of my foot and hiking in these shoes. For head to head testing, what I do is I put a different shoe on each foot and then I step on a stone to see which shoe transfers less of the shape of that stone to the bottom of my foot. The Brooks Cascadia 16 and the Hoka Speed Goat 5 provide superior protection in my estimation over the Ultra Lone Peak 7. The Brooks Cascadia 16 and the Hoka Speed Goat 5 were virtually indistinguishable. The Brooks Cascadia 16 I think does this because it does have a very good uh, midsole but it also has this ballistic rock plate. The Hoka Speed Goat 5 on the other hand just has that famously very thick uh, midsole and so when you step on the rock it's just sort of absorbed by the bottom of this shoe. Both the Brooks Cascadia 16 and the Hoka Speed Goat 5 beat the Ultra Lone Peak 7 in in head-to-head -head testing and this really checks out what I experienced on the trail. This shoe again is a minimalist shoe. It requires you to really watch what you're doing but again I had zero issues with the shoe with any kind of damage to the bottom of my foot. It's just that you will feel much more of the trail. Overall for protection if you are going to be hiking in really rocky terrain I would go with either the Brooks Cascadia 16 or the Hoka Speed Goat 5. Okay final thoughts. The Ultra 
Alone Peak 7 is an, is an amazing shoe. This minimalist design, the wide toe box, the zero drop design. It is a shoe that will really put you in contact with the terrain. I felt, again, more nimble and agile in these shoes. The one downside to this is that I felt like my feet wore out more quickly, especially if I was hiking in the shoes at the end of the day. I think that this is a shoe that requires more from the user than the other two shoes. This is a shoe that obviously has a huge fan base and a very loyal fan base, but I don't know that this shoe is going to be for everyone. The Hoka Speed Goat 5 does a lot of work for you. It has a very, very thick stack, and in my experience, it was slightly unstable, especially on uneven surfaces, perhaps due to the fact that it has such a high, uh, thick stack. That cloud-like walking sensation that Hoka is supposed to be famous for, I actually did not find these to be that much more cushioning than the Brooks Cascadia 16. To sort of even out the miles over 85 miles, I hiked 16 miles in these shoes in the last day. It was the last leg, and I really wish I had been wearing the Brooks Cascadia 16 at that point because I just provide, I, th I just feel like they provide more overall as a hiking shoe than the uh, Hoka Speed Goat 5. So the Brooks Cascadia 16, in my estimation, is the best trail running shoe for hiking this year. They are more traditional and re reliable shoes than the other two shoes, and they don't require you to adapt to those shoes as much as the other two. These shoes do everything well from protection to traction, stability, and comfort. My feet always felt well supported and comfortable in these shoes, even on long, arduous legs of the hiking trek. I have no major issues with these shoes at all. I can highly recommend these shoes for anybody that wants an, a phenomenal trail running shoe for hiking. Okay, that is it. Best trail running shoe for hiking this year. Do not step on any bear traps.